Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this next tutorial about how to paint this resin guy from Black Powder Red Earth tabletop game. Uh, in the last video, we tackled how to build these, and I've prepped two of them, but I will show you my painting process on this guy. Um, for the whole endeavor, I primed him with a rattle can in black. And I now will go over that base coat with a thin layer of Abaddon black or something similar. I go here for a satin finish and I take a rather large brush because I do not want to take too much time. I only go, or I, I do not go um, super wet, and I do not go right out of the pot. I try to hit the just the right consistency of paint so that I get a thin, even coat, and so that I fill up all the areas uh, that the rattle can didn't get fully. Um, the satin finish of um, that black also gives me a nice overview later to where to place my highlights. The black you can see here is actually the Vallejo Mecca satin and it's quite glossy. The Chaos Black will leave you with a slightly more matte finish. Next we'll be dry brushing with Dawnstone up to Corex White, and you already have seen the big um, dry brush I used here. We'll start with Dawnstone first to get out all the highlights on the miniature without having to edge highlight every part of it. The trick here is to, uh, for once, use a big brush, and um, for the second, um, get rid of most of the paint. Also, whenever you do a dry brush, also do a dry brush before, either on the edge of your painting handle or on the base, so that you get the uh, the majority of the pigments out of your brush. Then I start from top to bottom, working on those areas first and longest that will have the most highlights or where I want uh, the most highlights. Um, while focusing on a on one direction at the beginning I also try to get all the edges from below simply to accentuate all the areas and to have all the details pop later. Um, while less is more go for um, two or three layers and yeah, the, the trick is to get really not much paint onto the onto the edges, to get them highlighted without um, covering the area um, around, and slowly building up the volume of this. Also note um, that your brush needs to be dry, so don't wash it out in your paint water during the whole process of painting this miniature. And if you clean it up, leave it at least for a day or two, or try on a paper towel that it's definitely not wet when you approach this. There are also some paints um, that come out uh, super chalky when dry brushing, and I try to avoid that. So. That's good so far as I would go. I won't clean that brush because we will need it later. And so far I'm quite happy with the result. Next are base colors. I'm using a skin tone and a darker red and a darker blue from Games Workshop here and a middle sized brush from Red Grass Games. This gives me a good coverage and I can dilute the paints uh, accordingly so that 
I color the areas that I want to work on, but I also do not obscure my dry brushed uh, edge highlights. I'll show you on the palette what consistency we want here. The wet palette really helps here. You can, of course, go for dry palette too, but this will mean that you have to manage your paint uh, more closely and throughout the whole process. So as you have seen, the paint is rather diluted here and it's more like a, a wash or a glaze even. And depending on the color you use or the range of paint you use, um, you may need two or three layers or sometimes even uh, one layer can be sufficient. If you overdo this step and uh, say overpaint the dry brushed edges, um, that's no problem as we can always go back in with the dry brush and get the edges highlighted, get the color a bit bright, a bit lighter, and then adjust by going back in with the blue. It's also mandatory here that you give each layer a certain time to dry so that you do not um, wipe off the pigments of the first layer when going over the miniature with your second one. Once we have the, say, first two layers down, I'll switch to another color and uh, leave the, the trousers to, to dry. Depending on what color you use for the skin tones, um, you may need more, ta more than uh, two or three layers, especially when you're going um, directly on black, as I do here. Um, you could go with a brown tone or something similar, especially when you're doing more than uh, one miniature, like uh, doing the whole squat, you can uh, vary skin tones a little bit. I also mentioned that I'm going for a darker red in the beginning. That's uh, because I want the I want a nice transition. Later we will go upwards to a lighter red um, later. Basically I you, I start with a with a darker color and then work my way up. If you plan to use mostly washes or inks on your miniature, you might want to go for a lighter color for lighter red or a blue respectively, uh, depending on what wash or ink you want to use. For a more realistic look I leave some of the paint um, to pool in the recesses as a fold or yeah, a fold may be in a canvas or skin would catch actually more light. Note that this works contrary to um, what you usually see when um, you go for light edge highlights and then use a wash to uh, darken the recesses. That helps in a few places, but um, especially on skin and on cloth, it works um, contrary to what your eyes would see as uh, real or correct. I'm now adding a second layer of the blue to the back of the jeans and to areas uh, where the light won't catch too heavily, but I'm not super realistic about um, the color placement here. I mainly look what, or well, mainly see what looks best. And here I go for another layer of skin tone, and as you see, I push the, the pigments, push the, the paint into the recesses so that I get a natural highlight there. We can always correct this later. 
Now I use Abaddon Black on the gun and all the technical areas that I want to have black and I go with the same diluted mix as I have shown you on the wet palette before and I could go over the whole area uh, like like you would do with a wash but I focus on the bigger stages and the bigger areas and simply paint inside my dry brushed edges. This would take too long on the helmet and on the full body of the gun so I go for a glaze wash consistency here and that tones down our highlights and gives the whole area a bit more depth. Next I paint the satchels and backpack with a drab brown. In this case it's um, Steel Legion drab from Games Workshop. Sorry for not showing it properly. Um, I'm still going rather thin but not as thin as with the red shirt and the blue jeans as I want a little bit of more coverage here and the plan is to get more contrast into these areas and do that to do that in a slightly different way than we will do on the cloth and the jeans it would make sense if you uh, paint the full squad of 10 um, to have a bigger brush at hand, especially for the backpack um, to add to the detailed brush and save some time. But here I rather enjoyed using a smaller brush to add in the layers of brown to all those satchels and bags and stuff. Here it's also okay when the pigment of the paint pools in the recesses and we can then go uh, over the higher areas with the second layer or we can dry brush the whole area and thus blend uh, our brown with uh, brighter highlights. We also could um, dry brush later with a brown to get everything um, together so to say. So I now add gray sear or any light gray to all my base colors and then start with the first layer of highlights. With the red tone this can look pinkish or and, and or a little bit off and um, when we have it on the miniature we will we will see how, how it looks and we can tone that down or adjust it um, later at any time the thing here is especially on the jeans as i want a rather worn out look i do not go in a thick layer or adding adding a, a layer of highlights but I again use um, the color, the paint um, as a wash or a glaze so that it accumulates in the recesses and will leave yeah, more like a stain on the surface rather than a consistent layer of pigments. I repeat this in areas where the light would catch the most as usual, mainly the uh, top of the hind leg and front leg, stuff like that. But I try to get a little bit of the lighter blue pigments all over the place. It's good here to uh, leave the miniature to dry for a while switch to another area maybe so you can see later how things work 
now accentuate the skin area and while trying to to be realistic and trying to catch uh, the light source correctly or going mainly from the top I'm not super neat here I again try to to push the pigments into the recesses but I'm only defining the the top part of this and I will come back later to glaze down the the more shadowy parts of the arms so at this stage they they might look odd or they might look um, too shiny or too light but uh, once the miniature is dry and once we have added the last steps this will look differently as the same is with the with the shirt the gray that we add to the yeah say was a wine red it's the, the galbo back red um is rather dull and i adjust here directly with uh, the pure galbo back red to get a little bit more color in um, what you can do is stay stay with the gray and have a rather washed out dark red or you can push the gray contrast and then later glaze in with the brighter red next our miniature will have a rendezvous with morning brown or any other mid-tone reddish brown and we go super super thin here by adding loads of water until we have consistency where you can see through the the colors and where you can see the pigments i'm putting this on the base first to um, give it a sandy look as the more we dilute um, acrylic paints um, the more matte will the finish be later and while i'm going only over the shoes and the lower legs here um, you will see quite soon that i will cover the whole miniature in the stuff um, this needs a bit of practice and experience so i recommend to go rather a little bit thinner and if you are unsure don't leave too much of the pigments um, pooling around but you will shortly notice that even if it looks much on the miniature um, it won't look that heavy once it's dry um, the whole process will tone down all the colors and also blend them rather together and give the whole miniature a matte sandy tone don't be afraid of going in with your finger to wipe off um, the wash or glaze or however you want to call it uh, where you don't want it so after half an hour um, the miniature should be dry and you see that it has a very drab quality and we now push the contrast and the details out by dry brushing again i use the same brush with which i have dry brushed the miniature before the paint is ultra dry and there's almost no paint at all in the bristles and i use it very carefully here to uh, realign and to re-establish all the edge highlights where i want it thus you can um, define areas of interest uh, the more you stay in one area and the more you go over it the brighter it will be and uh, don't fear um, it can happen that paint will peel off especially when the miniature isn't hasn't dried enough but we will fix that later So here on the base you can see the the dried first layer and I go in with morphing brown out of the pot and then uh, do a wet blend by um, 
just adding water to the base and brushing the the pigments on the base back and forth to get a natural uh, sandy look to it. I also uh, now pick up the Steel Legion wrap again to roughly paint some areas around these rocks and then once again go in with a watered brush to wet blend the whole area. Again what looks quite heavy while it's wet will look uh, much more drab and uh, down colored once it's dry so keep on layering up the stuff until it's like you want it. And now let's go in with some red. I've tested the consistency on the side of the base so that I'm sure that the paint behaves like I want. Um, I, here I want a kind of glaze but I want to want also to have control of the pigments. I do not want to them uh, to pool around too much but I also do not want them to cover heavily. Here's a mix of the skin tone I used with black and I'm now going in to the, the darker areas of the arm. I tried and failed to establish some hairy texture here, but in the end it's also good for um, the, the shadows in that area. And uh, yeah, if that happens, you can simply go over it with your skin tone and do it again. Tackling the red again with almost no dilution here. I paint in uh, the how is how is it called the spectacles. <clears throat> and what what I do not want here is the pigments to leave the area where I want to paint so I go rather directly out of the pot so that I have full control and good coverage because I do not want to yeah put more layers than needed down there. Using Games Workshop's Gore Grand Defer contrast paint we will add more contrast to the backpack and ammo pouches. I'm going with uh, one part contrast paint and two parts water here. You can, however, dilute it more and have s several layers or use it right out of the pot and uh, push it around uh, on the miniature as you like. There are various ways to um, mix your own contrast paints, but I usually go the easiest way using a finished and proofed uh, product. I go all over these areas here. Uh, the, the same with the, the Morphing Brown wash. Um, you will see the full effect only once it's dry. And in some areas I go and wipe away the stuff with my finger. Um, pretty much like you would do with animal washes. Last but not least, I paint that little antenna pure black. Um, that part is usually made of matte material. Uh, the slightly uh, satin finish of abaddon black will highlight this detail uh, itself, so to say. I'm letting the the surface of the paint work for itself. I also pick out the grip of the gun and add a little bit of water to 
wash down the stark contrasty dry brush on the helmet and on some areas of the gun. But this isn't a mandatory step you can do as you like. It's just to neaten up some areas and to have a clear line here and there and to yeah, dilute the possible grainy effect of the dry brush. So that's very much it. I hope you could follow the process until here. Uh, this video only covers the painting up to this stage, which will give you a good tabletop standard. Thank you for watching and see you next time. As I do not want to draw this into unnecessary length, I will go no further with painting this guy in this video. I know you probably are all in here for this, uh, which is a much more detailed and realistic version. I will cover that in a second video and you will see that it's quite easy to go from here, which is already a good tabletop standard, to this rather more realistic version of these fantastic miniatures. So, see you soon. Be excellent to each other. Is this actually a post credit scene when we have no credits? No? Hmm. Well then. Cheerio.